Hey guys, this is Theta. I'm doing a quick tutorial on vertex color and alpha today. And what vertex color is, is um, if you look at the shading for a character, a lot of times they have it uh, in the material for the colors. This is all the color values. It says that um, they're using vertex color or raster color. These are the two types of colors that they can use. And basically what this means is if it's using raster color, it takes this value right here. Usually if it's using raster, uh, it will use, I mean register, excuse me. Um, usually, to, if it's using register, it will use 128 for all the RGB values, which means it's being gray because it doesn't need to be white. That's way too bright. Um, but if it's using vertex colors, you can look at the object and it has a little color node here. And what that means is if you look at colors, this is the color node it's using. So you can see, obviously, here it's using 128. And so you can actually put custom colors into these values to make a model all colorful and stuff. So we're going to see how to do that real quick. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and export this model to the desktop, and then in 3ds Max, I'm going to import that model. Um, and I don't need textures right now. Um, a lot of times you'd probably want to use textures, or a lot of models that use complicated vertex coloring don't actually use textures, like the shines for Fox and stuff like that. But um, So let's get to it. I don't need his eyes, so I'm going to hide those. And now I'm going to right-click um, here. I'm going to go to Vertex Paint. And I'm going to click on one, select all of his verts. Uh, this is for op like surface coloring. You can color each surface, but Brawl doesn't support that. It only supports this first option here. So what you're going to want to do is make sure it says vertex color um, and hit this button up here. And this will show you the object, not shaded at all, but uh, it will show you its vertex colors if you paint that stuff on. So um, let's just make, uh, let's do like a little rainbow pattern. So I'm going to click this brush. Size set to five, so you can see a brush thing appears here. I'm going to go ahead and some red, and then orange, yellow. Um, if you're familiar with Photoshop, you can actually change the type of layer. So like these are all a bunch of things here. If I did saturation and made this gray, it would tone down the saturation by like half. Um, so that's cool. You can do stuff with that. Um, anyway, let's do some green. Give me green on the wings, maybe. I don't know. And then a blue, let's give this blue wing, so it looks cool. And then purple. A thing to keep note too, if you are using the uh, brush, it only colors what it can actually see. So like you can see the right wing isn't colored at all here. Uh, and that's because it couldn't really see the wing. Um, so that's the reason uh, why that's not like, that wasn't colored from the side. So I usually use vertex selection, which means I select each single dot I want to use manually. And then uh, just use the fill bucket, which is a lot more precise, but it can take a while uh, longer. Um, and so once you have that all good, we're going to go ahead and put the skin. You can drag it on top of this. Um, and also just in uh, general, you don't want to have this box checked to retain sub animation custom attributes. Just a little box. I like having it checked. It's pretty useful for stuff, but it's uh, kind of hard to explain what it does. So. Now we've got our guy colored up here. We're going to do select all, then export selected. Uh, do this, so let's call it colorzard. Um, and when importing from 3ds Max, make sure you import in uh, inches and export in centimeters. So now I'm going to replace this. It's going to simplify the shader. It doesn't really matter. Um, and set this register color. If you want to use vertex colors, which we're using, set this to uh, false, which means it won't use the register. Uh, and so when I re-import this, you can see it's now all colored like this. Um, it's going to obviously have the texture in there too. If you didn't want the texture inside of there, um, you'd have to edit the shader and material. I'll edit, I'll make a like a little um, uh, tutorial on that some other time. But So that will shade him. But now let's say we wanted to use alpha to make his tail disappear. This is just you know, an example. Um, I'll go in here. I'll do another vertex paint. Um, this time I'll set it to vertex alpha. Um, and again, we're going to select all these verts so that I can use the brush on them. Set the brush to black so that his uh, tail, basically where there's black, it means it won't show up. Um, and when there's white, it means it will show up. So that's cool. Um, his tail is now going to show up all blank like that. So we drag this on top and export him again. Yeah, so let's just do the yeah, same thing. So now if I replace him one more time, you can
can see, you're going to need to do some shader settings, by the way. So uh, it's not showing up yet. The only way to change that, or the easiest way to change that, is some settings here. So the settings I usually use for 3D characters that I want invisible is this is set to 1. This is set to greater or equal, which is 1 up. And then uh, less or equal there, and 255. That makes it so that anything that's not completely invisible uh, doesn't, I mean, does show up. Um, it has a little bit of errors when there's like semi-transparent stuff, and you'll see what I'm talking about later, but um, it's pretty useful for that setting. Uh, this is going to be set to true. Um, this needs to be set to true as well. Um, and then this is going to be set to true, uh, and that should be good. So if we look here at the objects, you need to change this last option from OPA to XLU. Um, and then when you look at him, you can see the tail is going to be transparent. It's pretty useful, and this is the thing I'm talking about. If you have semi-transparency, sometimes it doesn't hide stuff the way you want it to. Um, that's why it's kind of not common that you'll see objects uh, that are, you know, like the character model having invisibility like that. So, um, yeah, so that's how you do color and alpha in vertices. It's pretty simple to do, and I really hope you guys liked it. Uh, thanks.